Would you please stand? You may be seated. Let's all sing a song that we know from heart here. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i am found was blind but now i see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed when we been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun On behalf of the family, I want to welcome everyone here to celebrate the life of Catherine Herring. Catherine Herring, a resident of Henrietta, passed away on November 7, 2022, in Henrietta, Oklahoma, at the age of 77. She was born Wednesday, December 13, 1944, in Eufaula, Oklahoma, to Sammy D. and Clara Noel Lane. Catherine married Jimmy Herring on August 3, 1962, in Savannah, Oklahoma and they were both teachers and taught at many different schools during their teaching careers. Catherine attended high school at Savannah High School and later attended Connor State College in Warner, Oklahoma, and Northeastern State College at Tahlequah, Oklahoma, where she received her bachelor's degree in elementary education. Catherine taught school at Dura Public Schools, Wyandotte Public Schools, and Okmulgee before her retirement. 
Catherine enjoyed a variety of activities, including tennis, bowling, fishing, and gardening, as well as music, art, but most of all, she loved supporting her husband's coaching career. She was his most enthusiastic fan, and she loved being with family. She recently achieved a lifelong goal of traveling to all 50 states with her loved ones. She is preceded in death by her parents. Catherine is survived by her husband of 60 years, Jimmy Dale Herring of the home, son Stephen Herring of the home, daughters Andrea Herring of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and Heather Herring of Miami, Oklahoma, pet boxer Maggie of the home, grandchildren Kirsten Cooper, Dalton Cooper, Bree Herring, and Landon Lawson, brother Jimmy Lamb, Lamb, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Larry Lamb and his wife, Yolanda, Savannah, Oklahoma, also by a childhood best friend, Betty Jo. Would you pray with me? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this day you've given us to come together and to celebrate the life of Catherine, whom we all loved dearly, Lord. We pray that you'd be with us through this time, that you would give us strength, Lord, and comfort and hope in you, that you would watch over us and bless what's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walking alone at eve and viewing the skies afar, bidding the darkness come to welcome each silver star. I have a great delight in the wonderful scenes above. God in his power and might is showing his truth and love. Oh, for home with God, a place in his courts to rest. Sure in a safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole and live with my God above. Closing my eyes at eve and thinking of heaven's grace. Longing to see my Lord, yes, meeting him face to face. Trusting him as my all, wheresoever my footsteps roam. Pleading with him to guide me onto that spirit's home. Oh, for a home with God, a place in his courts to rest. Sure in a safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole and live with my God above. An excellent wife who can find for her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships, bringing, she brings her food from afar. She rises also out of still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it, from her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and she stretches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sets them on the elders of the land. Oh, I'm going to miss Catherine, even this morning at church. You know, I've lost so many since I've been preaching and so many that are so dear and have been so faithful. And Catherine is one of those who was always here, her and Jim. And I'll always see her sitting right there. Long as I preach, long as I'm here, I'm sure I'm going to see her sitting right back there. Um, it's a hard day. She fought so hard to, 
to uh, make it so hard with this disease, and even until the end, uh, still had hope in her eyes, and she, uh, and she just was an amazing person to me that way. The things that she did, and her and Jim, the relationship they had, and Jim um, proving to me that love is so important, I think, to see him sitting there holding her hand. It was funny that day we went to a uh, wedding and I got to see somebody begin their life together. And as they said their vows and they said, till death do us part, as I thought of Catherine and Jim, I thought how naive we are when we're young and get married that we don't realize one day we'll say goodbye. But it's not really goodbye because we know where Catherine is. We know her hope and her joy and her glory. You know, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, he says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the preacher. And you know how true that is. So many things in this life are vain. They don't matter. They uh, are things that are important to us, but in the grand scheme are really not important at all. But yet when I sat with Catherine and her family and the girls and, and Stephen, I noticed that you know, one thing that's eternal is love and God and those relationships we forge on this earth are more important possibly than any other thing that we can possess. And the wise man was right when he said truthfully, the only thing we really can keep is the things that we give away. And we give our heart to someone else, our love to someone else truthfully. Those are the things we get to keep that extend beyond this life, beyond the grave, and our faith and our trust in Christ. Faithfulness, it seems today, is hard to find, and yet Catherine was faithful in everything, was she not? She was faithful in her attendance at church. She was faithful to her husband. It was interesting, because I really, some things, you know, I always learn as I go along, especially about the dog, Maggie. Maggie is, Maggie is Catherine's dog, by the way, and Jim wants you to know that. It's definitely Catherine's dog, and, uh, and he bought that dog because he loved her. He said there was a year with no dog, and he really enjoyed that year. It was, it was a great time in his life, but, um, uh, but he said, uh, Catherine wanted that dog, so he went to Arkansas, and they got that dog. So, uh, and that's, that's Catherine's dog. So, uh, and Maggie loves to get right up on you and love on you, and she's exuberant when you come in. And she's a little bit, uh, she's maybe a little bit too exuberant sometimes. Jim does, says, yeah, that's definitely cat. He wanted me to know that, so I just want you to know that. But she's a sweet dog. She's a sweet dog. You know, Solomon also tells us in Ecclesiastes, he says he set eternity in our heart. It's a passage in Ecclesiastes 3 we often look at. It says there's a time for everything, and you've heard that passage, a time to live, a time to die, a time to reap, a time to sow. But before that passage is really the most important thing Solomon says. He says he set eternity in our heart. And you know, that's true. We're not here today because somebody died. You know, we forget that at funerals. We're not here at all today because somebody died. People die every day, and sometimes nobody cares. We're here today because somebody lived. You know, you just can't forget that. You're here because Catherine touched you, because in some respect, she touched your life. She was important to you. You're going to miss her. She's here because we're here because she lived. We're here because of her life, not because of her death. Her death is just a step into the next, into the next life that we want to share with her, too. We want to see her there. We all do. I do. But the truth is, is that we can't forget the life that she lived. When I read that obituary, and obituary, this is short, isn't it? This is short. Our lives aren't like this. You can't put your life on a page. I mean, you can try. It won't fit. You can't do it. You can't put all the mornings you get up with someone you love and the evenings you go to bed with them. You can't, get, you can't put all the meals you had and the dinners you had with your family and the Christmases and the Thanksgivings you had and the times that you cried with your kids and loved your kids and the times they loved you. You can't put that on a sheet of paper. It won't fit. The reason you're here is because her life couldn't fit on a piece of paper. So her life's in you. Her life's written on you. And if that's the legacy we ought to live, leave with our lives, is that they're written on the hearts of other people. Our life in itself is not that important. It's just a vapor It says... A vapor, the scripture says, that appears for a little while and vanishes away. And how true that is, how short our life here is. But brethren, we should know, the truth is, is that 
It's what we leave that's important, the relationships that we leave that are important, and the impact we make on each other's lives that are important. And everything else is vanity. Our relationship with God, our relationship with the people around us, that's why we're here. It does my heart good to see all of you here. Because when I see you here, I think, this is all the lives that Catherine touched, and way more than this. This is just a little bit. All the kids that she taught at school, all those kids that loved her, that she, she helped forge their mind, that have memories of her, things that she did in class, all those things that she did that aren't going to fit on this piece of paper, they exist. And, that, and we see that in the lives of people around us, in the lives of the people that she touched. So never forget that. Funerals aren't about death. Funerals are about life. And, and, I, and I just want us to really think about that sometimes as we sit here. You know, he told us that, that he said eternity in our heart, that it's something that we look towards. And, and some part of me even believes that the most devout atheist in the world, at some point in their being, has to believe that there's more to their life than this. I think all of us feel that. I think that we feel there's more to us than, than what's here. I, I, just, I think we all kind of have that feeling. And maybe some people don't know how to articulate it, and maybe some people don't believe in God as we believe in God or Christ as we believe in Christ. But I believe it exists within our heart that there's more to life than this life. And, and I think when we think about that, what a blessing that is, a joy that is. And that's what God did. God, Solomon says it's God that put eternity in our hearts. There, it's there. It exists within us that we think there's more than this. You know, he says in Ecclesiastes, and I had to use this verse in, 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 for Jim because I, I, I was thinking about Jim when I, this verse in, in Ecclesiastes 9. Enjoy life with a woman whom you love. All the days of your fleeting life which he's given you under the sun. For this is your reward in life. You know, isn't that what Solomon said? That's our reward in life, is to enjoy life with a woman that we love. You know, so many people think marriage is a burden, and people say, oh, my marriage is tiresome, my marriage is a burden, and that's not, not the case here, and that's not what Solomon says it should be for us. He said that should be our reward. It should be our blessing in life. And when this, and Jim and Catherine, what a blessing their marriage was to so many people around him. He says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. You know, she loved all these things. She got to go to all 50 states, bowling, fishing, gardening. But I want to tell you something that amazed me more than anything else above all that. And I want you to think about this, this verse. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And Catherine was making these little gift bags with jewelry for everybody in this congregation, women in this congregation. And she didn't get done. And I got to hand out a half a dozen of them this morning that she had made. And the tears in the women's eyes when I give them that gift bag and said, this is from Catherine. You know, your life goes beyond this, which your legacy goes beyond this life. And if you should realize that. And she did. And what a blessing that was. Even in that, she left a legacy and something to give. And what a blessing that was, especially for those women who got them, a final piece of Catherine and something that she... Is as sick as she was and as bad as she was feeling, those of you who got those bags and the ones of you, I mean, she was making more. She just didn't get done. But the ones of you that got those bags, even in her sickness and even at her time of death, you were on her heart. You were on her mind. What, a, what an amazing thing that is to think about. You know, he also says in Ecclesiastes 11, he says, Cast your bread on the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Divide your portion of seven or even eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. If the clouds are full, they pour out rain on the earth. And whether a tree falls toward the south, towards the north, wherever the tree falls, there it lies. You know, Solomon said, like I said, what you do matters. Cast your bread on the surface of the waters, and it will come back to you. I can't tell you the number of funerals I preach. Some funerals, there'll be two or three people at a funeral. And when I preach those funerals, I think, why, why is there two or three people here? Why is there this many people here? Because of how you live. Because of casting so many times, what you cast on the surface of the waters that comes back to you when people remember you and when we have those fond memories. But then Solomon says the conclusion. The conclusion when all has been heard is fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. You know, that's, that was her life. I mean, I can't tell you what her faithfulness meant to me over the years. You know, I get tired of listening to myself. Um, and yet she was here to listen. Every time she was here, every time she could, every time the doors was open, she was here. And, you know, as a preacher, 
there's probably not a greater encouragement than that. You know, people can say what a great job you do, tell you what a great sermon you preach, pat you on the back, say amen. But you know what means more to a preacher than anything else is when people come back to hear you again. I mean, what greater compliment is there than that for somebody to come back and listen to you again and again and again, right? Um, what's unspoken is sometimes the most powerful. And I think that's powerful to me, and, and it should be powerful to you. What an amazing legacy. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. An inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. You know, Catherine has a place in heaven. And the amazing thing about that is when you're a Christian, I always look at it. Is I went to see people a few times in my life to stay at their house, and I could tell I was in the way. You know, I wasn't really ready for it. You have to sleep on the couch or whatever. You could tell that I was disrupting their lives. I went to stay one time years ago when me and Susie first got married at her, my, at her aunt's house. And it stayed in my mind all these times because when I got to her aunt's house, the lights were on, the outside door was open, and she's waiting to greet us. She greeted us. She gave us something to drink. We visited. She said, here's your room right here. Walked into the room. It was perfect. It was clean. Bed was made. Covers were turned back. Went to sleep. Next morning got up. She said, well, I got breakfast ready. Went in, had breakfast, got a visit. Never forget that. Because I didn't ever feel like I was in the way. I felt like she wanted us to be there. Like we were welcome. Like for that one night, that was my room. That was my house. I think with heaven, it's going to be that way. When we get to heaven, it's going to be some place that it's reserved. They're waiting. And it's ready. And if it's ready for them, then why not for us? And one day, why don't we get to see them again? Like God intended for us to see them. You know, Jesus was almost at his death, wasn't he? Close in John chapter 14. He was close. The cross was hours away. He looked at his apostles. He told them what I think he would tell us, what he would tell you, Jim, today. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. I go there to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there ye may be also. You know, heaven's a home, a prepared place for a prepared people. And Catherine was prepared for that home. And if there's hope today in this life, it's that we know where she is now. And one day, Lord willing, one day, we'll get to see her again. As Paul would say, therefore comfort one another with these words. The words of God, the words of Scripture. Let's have a song, brother. may not be ordinary to stand, but if you're able, let's stand and sing this song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercies and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory let us be true and faithful trusting serving every day 
Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. dismiss the family and then I'll dismiss everyone else. If you'll pray with me. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for Catherine's life and the life of so many that it touched as is evident here today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to emulate the things in her life that show now to be important. Our relationship with you, Lord, and our relationship with our family. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to cast our bread upon the surface of the waters and to enjoy our life, Lord, with the people that we love around us. We pray, Lord, you'll help us to stop and take time to appreciate those things that, that are so important, Lord, but yet sometimes seem so trivial to us. The hug or the I love you, the moments that we get to spend together with one another, Lord, that you help us to cherish them in our heart, that you'll give this family good memories, Lord, and, and that you'll give them joy. And most especially, Lord, that you give them hope, hope of eternity hope of a life beyond this, Lord, a life with you. We're just thankful, Lord, that you give us that. We're thankful, Lord, for this family, for all they've meant to us for so many years, Lord, and pray that you'd put your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.